Hey there, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to be learning about phase changes and heating curves. It's been better nights are calling, can't find no sleep. Can't you see how falling? Oh no. Welcome back. Well it's time to jump on into that computer. Cue the Metroid door noise. All right, let's draw ourselves a heating curve. Now, before we get started, I want to point out that this particular graph will actually hold true for every single substance that we know of. Uh, now, the numbers on the side, of, you know, of each axis might change, or the time spent in each of the different sections of the graph might vary, but the overall shape is exactly the same. Okay, so let me show you how it works here. So we're going to, oh, we got it. Let's label our axes. So uh, along the x-axis, we've got energy. Now that's total energy, kinetic, potential, whatever it is you're talking about. And on the y-axis, we have temperature, which, if you recall, is the measure of kinetic energy. And that's an important distinction to keep in mind. All right, so here we go. Down here in the corner, we're going to start with a little diagonal section like so. It will flatten out like this. We have another diagonal section going up, another flat section, and last but not least, a third diagonal section. Okay, so this is the shape of the heating curve. Let's go ahead and label it. Well, down here on this diagonal section, this is the solid phase. The middle diagonal section is the liquid phase, and as you probably already guessed, this top section is the gas phase. All right, so what about the, the two flat sections? Well, this first one here that's between a solid and a liquid, well, so when you're going from a solid to a liquid, that's called melting. So that's going left to right, but if you're going the other direction, if you're going from a liquid to a solid, well, that's called freezing. All right, so right to left. The second flat section, so liquid to gas, that's called vaporizing. All right, so that's left to right. The other direction, gas to a liquid, well, that's called condensing. All right, so right to left. Okay, so those are all the main sections. So now let's label this in terms of the energy changes. Well, as I said earlier, the temperature is a measure of kinetic energy. So any time when the temperature is changing, so these diagonal sections, that is also where kinetic energy is changing. So each of the three uh, phases when temperature is increasing is where kinetic energy is changing. And the two flat sections here, where the temperature stays the same, this is where potential energy is changing. So phase changes are changes in potential energy. Okay? All right, and then one final thing to point out, all right, because we're talking about energy, let's bring back our favorite energy terms, exothermic and endothermic. So as we go left to right, energy is increasing. So that is an endothermic process. And then exothermic, right to left, that's where energy is decreasing. So exothermic goes this way. And this will help us now to basically place these phase changes into either the exothermic or endothermic category. So let's make ourselves a little t-chart over here. These are the phase changes. Left side will be endothermic, right side will be exothermic. Okay, so left to right is the endothermic phase changes, so that would be melting and vaporizing. However, there is one final uh, phase change that we haven't really mentioned yet, and that's when it goes from a solid to a gas. It completely skips the liquid phase, and that is called sublimation. Now, any of you who have seen dry ice 
have seen sublimation. Dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide, and when you bring it into room temperature, where carbon dioxide is normally a gas, then it will just completely skip that liquid phase, go straight from the solid to the gas. That's sublimation. All right, the exothermic phase changes, so that's going right to left. So the opposite of melting is freezing. The opposite of vaporizing is condensing. And yes, there is an opposite of sublimation going from a gas to a solid, and that is called deposition. Now, if you have ever gone out in the winter, if you ever park your car outside, and then in the morning you go outside and you find ice all over your windshield, that's because the water vapor from the air came in contact with the very cold uh, glass and deposited on the glass. It didn't condense into liquid water before then freezing into ice. If it did that, then all the water would run down to the bottom and you only have ice at the bottom of the windshield. But the fact that it's completely covering the windshield means that it has deposited. Um, you'll also see this in older freezers uh, where you know it doesn't exactly work quite the way it's supposed to. You know, if you'll open up the freezer and you know, you see ice completely all the way around the inside of it, and like even on the top, that's because the water vapor got trapped on the inside of the freezer and then deposited on the surface. It didn't just you know turn into liquid and then refroze. Um, it actually went completely from a gas to a solid, and that is called deposition. So there you go. That's the heating curve. It's pretty straightforward. Just make sure you know how to uh, how to read it, how to label it, and find all the different parts. So there you go. Thanks a lot, guys. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any further questions, please be sure to comment below. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button so you can join us on this adventure known as chemistry. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later.